everybody welcome back to the channel this is mtg ghoul dude and today we're going to be covering my set my favorite set the set that i started with and we're going to be trying to just relive the nostalgia because like i said this is my set this is the set that i came into this is the set that i started playing magic with and this is probably why i have such a zombie fetish if you can even call it a fetish it's more just like a deep infatuation for the the great things that is Shadows Over Innistrad. So, let's get into it. A little bit about Shadows Over Innistrad. It was our 70th Magic expansion and the first in the Shadows Over Innistrad block. It was released in April 2016 and is a large expansion of the block. The expansion simple symbol is the set of the set is an upside down reflection of Avison symbol on a personal note and this is just me a long time ago after I first started playing magic and I really got into it I actually decided that that would be my first magic related magic the gathering related tattoo and uh, that's just it just stuck with me like I'm still I still don't have it but I still really plan on getting it it's going to be like on my left forearm, but the trick is I want to put it where the Church of Avison symbol is only on the down. When I'm, when you can see it, like, like say I put my forearms up, like I'm going to fight, the Church of Avison symbol is going to be up, but any other time the Shadows of Innistrad symbol is going to show. Just, just a little geek note. But anyways, let's go on ahead and get into it. Lamplighter of Shelloff. Four and a blue for a three-five zombie horror. Whenever it enters the battlefield, if you control another zombie, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Seagrave Scob. For one and a blue, it's a one-three, which is actually pretty good for a two-drop in zombies. But it's a vanilla creature besides the one-three. Stitch Mangler for two and a blue, you get a two-three zombie horror. It enters the battlefield tapped, but when it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Tranu Corpse Trawler. For three and a blue, it's a 1-1, one, one, but don't let that confuse you, because when it enters the battlefield, you put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, and it has an ability that says for two and a black, target zombie gains death touch to end a turn. Now, that may be costly, but if you're running your more budget friendly decks, that would actually be pretty a pretty good pickup. Stitchwing Ska for three and a blue. It's a three one zombie horror with flying. And you can tap a generic and a blue and discard two cards or turn it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Forgotten creation. We're getting into the blue rares now. <clears throat> for three and a blue. It's a zombie horror. It's a 3-3. Three, three. It has Skulk, so it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power than it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard all the cards in your hand. If you do, draw that many cards. So it's basically like a self-wheel every turn. If you didn't like the cards you had before your turn. Giraffe's Masterpiece for 3 and 2 blue. It's a 7-7 seven, seven zombie horror with flying. But it also gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. So if you're not looking to have a lot of cards in hand, this might be the zombie for you. For three and a blue, you can discard their cards and return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So if you're hellbent, in other words, you don't have any other cards in hand, you can just bring it back after you draw three cards and you, now it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Crow of Dark Tidings for two and a black. It's a two-one zombie bird, and I just I love black birds and I love crows, and that's just I love this art because it's so ominous looking. It's a zombie bird with flying, and whenever it enters the battlefield or dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Pretty good for a mill-based strategy. A self mill. Hound of Farbogs for four and a black. It's a five-three zombie hound. Or a zombie dog now. With delirium. And as long as it has. It has menace. As long as there are four more card types among cards in your graveyards. Which is not bad. But 
I don't see why a dog needs delirium, especially when it costs that much. It should just be a 5-3, five, 5-drop five with Menace. Rancid Rats. I love playing with this card because it's a zombie, but it's also a good blocker because it's a 1-1 one, one for 2 with Death Touch. But we, we do better nowadays with 1-1s one, for 1 with Death Touch. But it also has Skulk and the aforementioned Death Touch. And I love the flavor text. They're in the walls. Can't you hear them? Let it be known that there was no who said this. So it either they died or they weren't important. Rotten Heart Ghoul. Oh, look. It's me. For three and a black, you get a 2-4 zombie. When it dies, target player discards a card. To die failing to save a loved one is just so sad. Or more to the point, pathetic. Liliana Vess. Ghoulsteed for four and a black. It's a 4-4 four, four horse. Zombie horse. It's so sad. He's got like arrows sticking out of his back. That's so horrible. For two and a black, you can discard two cards. Return Ghoulsteed from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped. No. Oh, that flavor text is really sad. Oh, this is my boy. This is my boy. Diagraph Colossus for two and a black. Two, two, zombie giant. Whenever it enters the battlefield, it enters with additional plus one, plus one counters each for each zombie card in your graveyard. Whenever you cast a zombie spell, put a two, two, black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. This is my favorite card. This is my pet card. I love this card. I love the art of this card. I just love everything about it. Oh, I could sit here for hours and gush on this card. It's not the best card. By no means. It's not for zombies. But it is my favorite card. Relentless Dead. For two black. It's a zombie. Two two. And this creature is expensive. I don't know why. It's just a good zombie card. But it's super expensive. Oh and there's some there's some lore. With this card. We'll get into that in maybe a short. But anyways. I do digress. When Relentless Dead dies. You may pay a black. If you do return it to its owner's hand. When Relentless Dead dies. You may pay X. If you do return another target zombie creature card. With converted mana cost extra less. From your graveyard to the battlefield. So here's the thing. In conjunction. You can pl use both of these abilities. At the same time. So, if you, say, have infinite mana, and you have, like, this weird non-Phyrexian altar sack outlet, what you can do is, you can sacrifice it. And as long as you have a, I don't know how you're going to get infinite, infinite mana with, a, with no Phyrexian altar. But, there is a way you can consistently loop. Like, say, you don't have a, uh, what's it called, and what is it called? The it's it's the equipment that brings it back as a zombie. I can't remember it at the moment. I love the card too, but I can't think of it. But what you can do is you can constantly sack as long as you have infinite mana, you can sacrifice the relentless you can sacrifice like Giraffe's Messenger. You can sacrifice the relentless dead. Sacrifice the Giraffe's Messenger again, make sure it's in the graveyard. Sacrifice the Relentless Dead. The triggers go on the stack. You can do all three. And if you have infinite mana, you can consistently bring this back to your hand. Play it. Sack it. Sack the other creature. Bring back that creature and this creature to where it's like a loop. Which is pretty cool because I did that in a game and it, went, it was a good combo and I won the game. I didn't think I had any lines out, but I won. Anyways. Prized Amalgam for one, a blue and a black. This is a 3-3 zombie. Whenever it, a creature enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, return prized amalgam from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. See, I don't know. If y'all long-time viewers will know, I was trying to brew around this deck, and it, 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 it did not work. I was not successful. But I did love brewing with this card because it did have so much, like, I wouldn't say combo potential, but it was a good card. It was resilient. 
unless you had you went against like somebody that was consistently wiping graveyards. But I love this card. I love the art of this card. I love how this is almost like a a three armed Edward Scissor Man, Edward Scissor and Iron Man, because he's got the whole the the light in his chest and he's got the scissor hand and the the low the small the under right hand. I don't know what you would call the, the a second right hand. But anyways, rise from the tides for five and a blue. Oh, this is we're now into our affiliate cards. Now this is something and some some other people might see later that I might be brewing a deck with this card in it and other cards that for that do that do these kind of things. So rise from the tides for five and a blue. It's a sorcery. Put a two two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tap for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. That could be a thing. Uh, I might be doing some shenanigans with, with this card and a couple other cards. Compelling deterrence for one and a blue. It's an instant return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that player discards a card if you control a zombie. Which if you're playing this, you're probably playing zombies. So much for neighborly hospitality. Ooh. <laughs> I love that. Ghoul callers a accomplice. I thought it was an accomplishment. Anyways, accomplice. For one and a black, it's a 2-2 human rogue. For three and a black, exile it from your graveyard. Put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Activate this ability anytime you could cast a sorcery. That's, and I've never heard truer words. Once in the box, we're all the same. Pretty much. Shamble back. For a black, it's a sorcery. You exile target creature card from a graveyard, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, and you gain two life. I love the art. It's just like, the, it's like the birds are almost trying to guide him a certain way, even though they're trying to pick him apart at the same time. Geese's bidding. For two and two black, it's a sorcery. Put two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. But if you discarded it, you could pay its madness cost for two and a black. Which is not bad. It's a little bit better rate than two and two black. So I'm not complaining. And then we have Ever After. For four and two black. It's sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each of those creatures is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Put Ever After on the bottom of its owner's library. So this is like basically just a really good reanimation spell for two creatures. If you really cannot get them back naturally. Oh, it's a meme from under the floorboards. If you watch Spongebob, I think you would get that meme. So, for three and two black anyways... It's a sorcery, and it has a madness cost of X and 2 black. So if you discard it, you can pay X, where well, X is whatever it is. Where before you, this is this is the effect before madness. Put three 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield tap, and you gain three life. Now here's the madness. If under From under the floorboards, madness cost was paid. Instead, put X of those tokens onto the battlefield, and you gain X life. So if you have infinite mana, and you discard this card, you can essentially just get... A billion zombies at a billion liar. Which is super cool. I, I've, I've always wanted to just run off with this card and do amazing and wonderful and terrible things. But I just never got the chance. But anyways, guys, this has been a long one. I really appreciate you. If you're subscribed, thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Like the video. Share it with your friends if they liked or they played around this time. Because, you know, you know, nostalgia's got a nostalgia. But anyways, like I said, I appreciate it, everybody. And uh, I will see you guys next time in the graveyard.